Stenson's tenure as the 2023 European Ryder Cup captain is now over. After just four months, Stenson announcing his intention to play for Live Golf earlier today. A few hours ago, Ryder Cup Europe released a statement saying in part, Ryder Cup Europe today confirms that Henrik Stenson's tenure as captain of Team Europe for the 2023 Ryder Cup at Marco Simone Golf and Country Club in Rome, Italy has been brought to an end with immediate effect. In light of decisions made by Henrik in relation to his personal circumstances, it has become clear he will not be able to fulfill certain contractual obligations to Ryder Cup Europe that he had committed to prior to his announcement as captain back on Tuesday, March 15th. It is therefore not possible for him to continue in the role of captain. Confirmation of the new 2023 European Ryder Cup captain will be made in due course. Ryder Cup Europe will be making no further comment on any aspect of the process until that time. As for Henrik Stenson, he released this statement earlier today. After much consideration, I have decided to join several of my fellow professionals and play in the Live Invitational Series starting at Bedminster in a week or so's time. As many of, uh, many of you will have already seen, fortunately, my decision to play in Live events has triggered Ryder Cup Europe to communicate that it is not possible for me to continue in my role as Ryder Cup captain. This, despite me making specific arrangements with Live Golf, who have been supportive of my role as captain to ensure I could fulfill the obligations of captaincy. While I disagree with this decision, for now it is a decision that I must accept. I have huge respect and admiration for the Ryder Cup and those individuals behind it who I know are doing their utmost to act in the best interest of the historic events. So with that, hello and welcome into Golf Central here inside our Golf Channel Worldwide Headquarters. I'm George Savarikis, pleased to be joined by Jaime Diaz as well as Trip Eisenhower. Uh, more chaos in the world of golf. Trip, let's start with you. Um, your thoughts on the news that Henrik Stenson, in essence, uh, impeached as captain for Team Europe. Well, I don't think it's a surprise. I mean, I, I, I think Henrik probably even knew it was coming because this is where the battle lines have been drawn. I, you don't know if they're, these battle lines are going to exist even at the end of the year, but where they are right now, there's a hard line in the sand, and him announcing for Liv means that he will not be on the Ryder Cup more than likely, and, and I think he had to know it was coming. Of course, he was graceful in his in his um, you know declaration there and thinking that he could have stayed the captain uh, but again I, I'm not surprised by it but I look at this and this is why I say where the battle lines are drawn right now because obviously you would you would suspect Luke Donald would be the next guy in line after Henrik Stenson but the European side is going to have a problem because he, uh, uh, at least as far as what they have been doing with pipelines of captains they have been, you know, using these guys that had played with a lot of experience, and then they get roles as assistant captains, and then they get the role as captain. And it, the secession list, if you look at it, it's, there, there are four players that are currently playing for Liv that you would suspect would have been in the captaincy pipeline. And I'm speaking of Lee Westwood. I'm speaking of Graham McDowell. I'm speaking of Ian Poulter, and I'm speaking of Sergio Garcia. So, again, it's where the battle lines are drawn right now, but if, you, if, if they stay that way then certainly you would have to think that they're going to have to maybe recycle some captains, maybe somebody like Paul McGinley or Podrick Harrington or uh, even Thomas Bjorn, uh, that, because it, it, they don't have the secession line that they, they had already built into the system. So this is another disruption that Liv has thrown in, uh, again, with the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour and the European sides basically drawing the battle line. So... I'm not surprised that Henrik had to step down, but I, where they go from here, I, I don't know. You look at the language in that statement from mm -hmm. the European Ryder Cup team. Certain contractual obligations that were agreed to back on March 15th can no longer be fulfilled in their eyes. It seems like a big about turn by Henrik Stenson in 120 days' time. Um, your thoughts on how the events unfolded and then how big a blow is this symbolically to have the Ryder Cup captain and be forced to step down? Well, to start with the second part of the question, I think it diminishes the Ryder Cup to some extent because what always drove the, the Ryder Cup was the passion of the European players and how important it was to them. It was, you know, end-all, be-all. It was more important almost than the regular season and even the majors in some cases. That was certainly the case in the 80s and during the 90s, and it's continued on. And when you see so many defections now from the uh, DP World Tour, seven of these guys that were Ryder Cup stalwarts, yes, they're not at the peak of their career anymore, but still, they're the heart and soul in many ways. And symbolically, it just looks like the Ryder Cup wasn't all that important. Uh, I would say all that important, but it wasn't the end-all, be-all. And 
bigger things are taking place right now that uh, overshadow uh, sentiment and romance. It's, it's money now. And those contractual obligations that, that the European tours, excuse me, the DP World Tour set up for Hendrick were ones that he violated. Uh, and, I, and is that going to be the biggest blowback that you think Hendrick gets either in the golf world or among fans is saying yes back on March 15th I, and then having this in There's been so much reversal on the live situation. I don't think he stigmatized it in particular. To me, the, the key phrase was in light of the decisions made by Henrik in relation to his personal circumstances. And I think personal circumstances could mean a lot of things behind the scenes that we don't know about, but he may have an individual situation that made this decision, wait, it may seem irrational to some, he may be in a position in his life where the money was more important than his legacy, than his the history that he's made, than the Ryder Cup, than all those things. It reminds me of what Phil Mickelson went through. You know, it didn't make sense either. I mean, Phil's got so much going for him if he just stays with the PGA Tour and then the PGA Tour champions and then, you know, a media career broadcasting. All this money was going to come his way, but he seemed to need a lot of money right away. Immediately. Yes, and it seems similar with Henrik. And, and you know, I don't really, you know, condemn him for that if his if his situation is is dire in that regard. Who knows? But, you know, I don't think that he in particular looks like a, a betrayer. He just looks like another guy who decided, hey, in this moment, this is the best decision for my life. It doesn't look good to fans. It doesn't look good to golf traditionalists. But perhaps individually, it's the right decision for him. I mean, it seemed incomprehensible a year ago right. that you would have a Ryder Cup captain who had been appointed that's forced to step down in, in joining Live. It seemed like the Ryder Cup was like, unapproachable, unassailable, yeah. and now we're clearly seeing that's not the case.